Hey, what's up, King Sun? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. All right, peace, y'all. Peace, peace, peace. So, in this video, we're going to be talking about the artist Meek Mill. Now, Meek Mill has been in the tabloids lately uh, for looking silly, all right? People been calling him Freak Mill, you know, all after this stuff we heard with him and Pete Diddy. All right, there's a lot of stuff going on now. I'm going to be talking about his Freemasonic ties. And I want y'all to understand something. A lot of these rappers, you know, they come out of nowhere and then they just somehow, for some strange reason, they always seem to be the people that we glorify. All right, but we're going to talk about it. Um, in this video. Now, um, Meek Mill got into rapping around the early 2000s. I, um, he was influenced by his uncle, Grandmaster Nell. Now, when I said this, right, I said this to y'all before, a lot of these rappers are in the business off of nepotism. Okay, their family is somebody that's somebody. All right? And then this is how these people get on. Now, Grandmaster Nell uh, was actually a DJ in Philly that mentored Will Smith and Jazzy Jeff, all right? Now, um, I want to point this out, too. Whenever you see a lot of these old-school artists with the Grandmaster and, and, and all of this stuff in their name, that comes from Freemasonry, all right? And the same thing with the term MC, right? MC means to master the craft, right? But that is a degree and also in Freemasonry, all right? Uh, the master's craft. Now, um, in the early 2000s, Meek would start his own group called the Bloodhounds, all right? Now, this is where a lot of you see, you see a lot of those old school rap battles on um, YouTube and stuff like that. Um, but this, they had a DVD at the time. Now, they would rap on the DVD and give it out and sell the mixtapes along with the footage. Right, this is how people knew who Meek Mill was when he was young. They would go from different towns and all of that stuff and, and just battle different rappers. So it was good for him to get the exposure. Now, um, this actually allowed Meek to get signed to a local hood label, which was called Headshot Records. All right, now... Um, this label wasn't too big, but it was, it was enough to get his foot in the door. All right. Now around 2006, Meek did his own thing and dropped multiple mixtapes under, um, a company called GT Franchise. Now GT Franchise was actually the company that got his foot in the industry's door. You get what I'm saying? On this, on this label, he dropped, um, the mixtape Flamers, uh, the Real Me and Flamers 2, I think. All right. Um, now, during this time, he had signed to Charlie Mack. Now, Charlie Mack was actually a staple in Philly at the time. All right. Um, you know, he had a lot of industry connections that uh, Meek actually needed to get put on. All right. Now, uh, following him signing to Charlie Mack under a management deal, uh, he signed with T.I., and I believe that was in 2008. He signed the T.I.'s, Grand Hustle, and Warner Brothers. Yeah. Now, during this time, um, Meek got locked up and was eventually dropped from Warner Brothers. But he was still on um, Grand Hustle at that time. All right? Now, um, I truly believe, this is my point of view. Like, I truly believe around 2011, I want to say, is when he got you know, tied in with the Masons and stuff like that. Like I said, you know, a lot of these people are connected to these um, organizations, all right? And they're put in position for specific reasons, okay? Now, um, he signed with Ross's um, Maybach Music around 2011. Now, I, wanna, I want y'all to pay very close attention. When, when Ross started... Maybach Music, because first he had Triple C's, but when Raw started Maybach Music, um, he had Pill, he had Starly, Wale, Meek Mill, and it was Ross, right? Now, out of all of them individuals, Meek Mill was the only person to get his own record label, 
All right, out of all of them, he came in Maybach Music with the Dream Chasers record label. None of them other dudes was able to do that besides Meek Mill. All right, but I'm going to talk about that as well. That's important too. Now, um, now once he signed with Master Mason Group, I mean, May, once he signed with Maybach Music Group, Maybach uh, Music Group was basically um, a task to push hope you know what I'm saying? To the masses. This is what I truly believe they signed Meek Mill for, was to push hope. He, you know, a lot of his songs was like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm giving hope to the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Now, when I say he had Freemasonic Taj, right, I'm going to show y'all this video, Levels. Okay? And this was shot by Hype Williams. I'm going to show y'all this clip right here. I pull up like I... Now, there's no reason that they would put these logos in this video unless there wasn't some type of ties. Okay, now, it would make sense that this would be in this video and the song is about its levels to this, right? Levels, different degrees, different levels. You don't just think you're going to rap and get put on. It's what I'm talking about. These people are all in some type of group. All right. Now, in order for me to continue his success, right, because, you know, he had he had a hit record uh, with I'm a Boss. OK, and that kind of took his career further up. OK, now, and it went in turn with him doing that. He had to give up a sacrifice. Right. And we all know his sacrifice was little Snoop. Now, I'm going to play this clip about what his mom said. If you're a rat, you're supposed to have paperwork. Oh. Not only did I call the prison and let them know that he was sending me death threats, and also I left my phone number for them to call me back as well. So I don't think that that's uh, ratting. That's basically protecting my peace, which I'm here to do. by all Now, some people may say, Jay, why, why do these people have to do sacrifices? Why? Because I, it's spiritual currency. Okay, when you messing with certain um, deities and stuff like that, there's there, there's levels, no pun intended, but there's levels, okay? And certain things are required, you know what I'm saying? If you look up um, religions like stuff like that, a lot of those people over there, right, they practice that where they give up people for human sacrifices and stuff like that. This stuff is no joke. People think this is a joke, but it's no joke. Okay? Now, um, we all know Meek Mill went to jail for wheelie and his bike, right? But this was his penalty. Okay? Now, when you sign up in the high up on the totem pole, you go, yeah, they'll make you successful and rich and famous and you'll have all of the women and all of these things. But then when you don't do what they want you to do, Right. He had me. He had Nicki Minaj on his arm. You know, he was on top of the world. You know what I'm saying? Um, things just started to crumble for him. OK, he lost his girlfriend. All right. He lost the battle against Drake. All right. People were humiliating him in his own town. His fame was declining. OK, he, they were making a mockery out of his tough persona. All right. Because they built him up that way. All right, now, like I said, we all know he went to jail for Willie and the bike and all of that shit. But then at the same time, you got to remember, this was a penalty. He didn't fulfill the obligations. Okay, now, ironically, okay, Meek was begging, begging to get out of jail during this time. He was begging and crying. You know, he went and cried to the judge, please let me out. You know, they wanted him to bow down. And when I say they, I'm talking about the Illuminati. All right. These Freemason people, they wanted him to bow down. All right. Now, at this point, you know, what I'm saying these higher ups, they wanted his butt. Let's be honest here. You know, what I'm saying they wanted his butt. We've already heard stories of Rick Ross being funny. P. Diddy being funny. OK, he was hanging out with the with the uh, the, the, the uh, Mark. What's that guy name on the boat? You know, what I'm saying. Like, these people here, you know, they be on some funny stuff in this business, man. You know what I'm saying? And and Meek is down with this crew. 
We, the people then said, yo, Jay, did you hear the audio of Meek Mill getting blamped out by P. Diddy? That stuff is real, son. I didn't listen to it, nor do I want to listen to it, but it's real. Okay, this stuff really do go down in this industry, and a lot of your favorite rappers are basically getting bent over. Okay, they they're getting bent over, and you think, oh, she's a female. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing for her to go through the ritual. Yes. Why do you think a lot of these female rappers always promote this lesbian nonsense? Because they've been they've been uh, uh, tortured by that as well. Okay, a lot of them high-ranking um, CEOs have did disgusting things to them too. All right, and I'm talking about women. You get what I'm saying? Women CEOs have done these things. So when we see this stuff here, it's no coincidence. All right? Like, I'm not surprised that Meek Mill is now being outed for being funny with P. Diddy because, like I said, these people want what they want, son. When you get in that business, they want what they want. All right? So um, I hope I answered y'all questions with this. I'm going to be doing the Nas video next. We're going to get to that. I know some people asked me to do um, Bruce Lee and stuff like that. I'm going I'm to get to all of y'all requests, man. You know what I'm saying? Definitely going to get to y'all requests. But um, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, man. And uh, peace, man.